Hi, today I'm showing you uh, a small car, uh, electric Chevette, an Acadian, on this rotisserie uh, sh machine basically designed to turn a car on its side 180 degrees or 360 degrees. Now, uh, with this specific one, I had borrowed this one uh, from a gentleman that uh, uh, had this up for use. Uh, someone I know uh, in the area and uh, it had been recently occupied but uh, it was up free for use. Uh, I was just talking about it one day, uh, wanted to make one, he said why don't you take mine, so um, here it is. Uh, this device here um, came very plain Jane. It did not have uh, the scissor jacks here that I had purchased from Princess Auto. They're 5,000 pound scissor jacks and they were capable of lifting a uh, motorhome uh, type vehicle and what I did is I made plating underneath for the supports uh, of the scissor jack and then to lift uh, this retaining shaft up I basically made these connectors right here with uh, 8 inch steel this is all pretty much between quarter inch and eighth inch steel um, welded securely on these bars to make this thing possibly happen now in here you can see that I had to because this car was made for larger cars like um, uh, possible Chevelles, Malibus, uh, Oldsmobiles, where there was large, much larger vehicles, uh, these bars would stick inside of the frame. This one here, specifically Chevette, I had to remove the bumper shocks. I made a eighth inch plate on a two and a half inch square tubing, welded it to the plates, and it is now supported to these T-bars. These T-bars are now um, evenly spaced between one side to the other, so therefore uh, everything's central. The next thing I had to do, and it was after a, a, a few trials of this, was where is the uh, center point of gravity? Because you have a lot of metal on the bottom of the car, you have uh, not so much metal on the top of the car, so therefore you have to uh, central your weight, and here's where the adjustment was made right here you can see where the existing uh, bolt was before for someone else's car uh, specifically for this car to centralize it I had to move this down drill another hole in the bottom where there was no hole in order to make this to move fairly freely you can see here that I'm moving this quite easily uh, just, just myself I'm moving this back and forth uh, no one else is helping me but, but me and what I'm going to do now is show you a 360 degree uh, turn on this rotisserie and you'll notice that it takes very little, little no effort at all once it's balanced between top of vehicle and bottom of vehicle. So I'll give it a try here and you'll see this uh, in action. And you can see that before I'm going all the way upside down, how far I'm actually away, the roof, from clearing the crossbar that connects these two end links. And I'm able to flip it completely upside down. So there it is, folks. It's, uh, it's 360 degrees. And uh, same when I go to move it back. Very easy. Very easy. So there it is, that's the Acadian on a full size rotisserie, it will make it very easy to do all this work. I just want to show you quickly before we end the video, some of the stuff that has to be done and it makes it easy on a rotisserie. I will sort of lock this in place, I'm going to show you here, uh, we have to support this because it is not fully tied down, but uh, I've made brand new rear floor pans for this car. Uh, support bars are crossed. There's now, I've got uh, a full frame going through the sheet metal area and new sheet metal tied in over top to close it up. I will be at one point grinding these all down. Everything will get uh, seam sealed, cleaned up, and pretty much ready for uh, a chassis coat. So, so there you have it. Um, let me show you one more thing. We have the gas tank area here. It's going to support a Jeep Scrambler gas tank. 
So um, there's some more welding. We have a section of has to be closed in here for the shock towers, uh, which definitely will make it easier being upside down or on its side doing the work. So there you have it. That is the flip side of a rotisserie and the Acadian.